continuing endeavor Kibo classes. This time I want to deal with Akis. There are different forms of Akis. Most buildings are art. Most structures, especially oh, some of these old structures are art. Even current ones, either for aesthetics or for stability. Now, there are different forms of Akis. We have Akis that are determinate and the keys that are indeterminate. What we call, we have what we call hingeless archies. Hingeless archies. Hingeless. Archies that are like this are said to be hingeless. It has no hinge. Such archies are indeterminate. They are hingeless. There's no hinge in them. We have two hinge archies. Two hinge. Two hinge archies. This is two hinge Akis, two hinge. This is two hinge. Two hinge Akis. Two hinge Akis. Two hinge Akis. This is hingeless. Hinge, hingeless. Hingeless Akis. This is the term indeterminate. This hingeless Akis is, this hingeless Akis are indeterminate. To three degrees, three degrees of indeterminacy. Three hingeless arches are indeterminate to three degrees. Three degrees of indeterminacy. Why two hinge arches, two hinge? This, this hinge, the, this support, these two supports are the only hinges. Two hinge arches are indeterminate, also indeterminate to one degree. Two hinge arches are indeterminate to one degree. Why three hinge arches are indeterminate? Two, two, sorry, two hinge arches are indeterminate to one degree, while hingeless arches are indeterminate to three degrees. We are not going to deal with them now because we are not still dealing with indeterminate structures. We are going to deal there with them when we are dealing with indeterminate structures. Now we are dealing with determinate structures. So we come to what we call three hinge arches. Three hinge. Three hinge arches. Three hinge arches. Three hinge arches. Three, look at it. One hinge, two hinge, three hinge. Three hinge arches. Three hinge. It has three hinge. It is a hinge. It is a hinge. This support are hinge supports. Three hinge arches. Three hinge arches are determinate. Three hinge arches are determinate. That's what we're going to deal with now. Since we're dealing with determinate systems. Three hinge arches are determinate. We're going to deal with them. Two hinge arches are indeterminate to one degree. We're going to deal with them later. Three hinge arches are indeterminate to three degrees. We're going to deal with them later. So now we're dealing with three hinge arches. Look at the three hinge arches on the board. It's loaded with a load of a uniform displayed load of six kilonewton per meter. It has a height, the, the rise, what we call the rise, that's the height of three meters. And the span is 25 meters. We are going to get the reactions at the support, support A and B. We get the reactions at the support A and B, and then try to, when we get the, rea the rea reactions, look at the reactions displayed here. The reactions are vertical reactions. Arrow at, arrow at point A, we have arrow A vertical, and arrow A horizontal. There's horizontal reaction because the hinge. Hinge has two reactions. Hinge support has two reactions. Then at support B, there is reaction, reaction B vertical and reaction B horizontal, just like they are hinge supports. And this is the load, this is the hinge that made it three hinge. So if you remember what I told you when I was dealing with um, continuous beam that were hinged, I told you that wherever the beam or any structure is, we will find a hinge on any structure, that particular point becomes flexible. Hinge makes a point flexible rather than stiff, as it is found in most beams. The other parts of the hinge of the of the of the arc are stiff, except at the point of hinge. So at those hinge points, there's no resisting bending moment because of flexibility. So if we if we calculate reactions the way we take reactions and get the vertical reactions, we can cut we can cut the hinge at point C. We can cut the, the arc at point C because there's a hinge there. If we cut it, we won't have, we won't have any problem because there will be no bending moment. We cut there 
and take belly moment at that point. Since there's no belly moment, we can take belly moment at that point and conclude that moment, belly moment at that point is equal to zero because it is. And with it, we were able to get the, the horizontal reactions. After getting it, we can now start taking our bending moment. And the, the, if you look at the, a, if you look at a, an arc, an arc is a parabola. An arc is a parabola. When we are looking for bending moment, we will be for, we will have to be getting the bending moment at each point. And the, since the the nature of the arc is a rise, we have to be getting apart from the main rise we know the topest topmost rise, which is in this case three. We have to be getting the rise at different points. And the, to do that, we use the equation of a parabola. We use the equation of a parabola, which is we have that y is equal to 4f over l squared. That is, at least f is the rise of a parabola. Bracket this, this part, that's the span l, l minus the, the, the distance, that's x. The distance we have times x. This is the equation of a parabola. This is the equation of a parabola, which we're going to use to be getting the value of the rise at any particular point, because that is why. Why this, this, this is like a graph, a parabolic graph, which gives us the value of y at different length. That is this, the equation, if you remember the equation of a parabola, where it is equal to four times the rise over the, the square of the span of the, or the length, if you like, bracket the length minus the point in question, close bracket times that point. That's, that's what we use to be getting the value of the various locations up on the on the on the uh, arc as we are calculating the moment so we can start now let's see how we deal with this one the first thing we do is to take bending moment take bending moment at point b to get arrow a because arrow arrow a arrow a vertical arrow a horizontal may not come in when i'm taking moment at point b because there's it doesn't have any distance it is parallel to that point it doesn't have any distance, any, any particular distance to that point B. So I, I will be able to get arrow A vertical. So when I get arrow A vertical, I take moment again at point A, I get arrow B vertical. Then to get arrow H, arrow A horizontal, I cut at the I cut at the hinge. When I cut at the hinge, I now take moment about that hinge because the moment at the hinge is also equal to zero. So if I do that. I get all my parameters. So I start now. So to get arrow, to get arrow a vertical, I take moment about b. Moment about b is equal to zero. As I normally do, I have twenty five. Twenty five arrow a, arrow a vertical. Twenty five times arrow a vertical minus the load six times twenty five. That's the total of the load. Then times half of the distance, which is. In this case, it's 12.5. It was zero because there's other load. Arrow B vertical will not have moment at its own point. So arrow A vertical. Arrow A vertical will be equal to the whole of this. That is 6 times 25 times 12.5 all over 25. That's 6.12 times 12.5. 6 times 12.5. That's our vertical gives me 75 kilonewton. 75 kilonewton, 75 kilo, kilonewton. That is our vertical. That's our A vertical. That's what our vertical gave me. And that's what our vertical gave me. So I have, let me try our B. Our B vertical. Let me try RB, RB vertical, so that I can get RB, I've got RA, RA vertical. Yes, yeah. So, I get RB vertical. To get RB vertical, I take moment about, I take moment about point A to zero. I have 25, 25 RB vertical. Look at it, 25 RB vertical. Minus 6 times 25 times 12.5. Yes, it's equal to 0. So 
How do you pass the call? It's equal to 6 times 25 times 12.5 all over 25. Which I got out of the vertical to be equal to 75. Our vertical is also equal to 75. 75 kilometer. So if you add all of both of them, it gives you 6 times 25. That is vertical force is being equal to zero. So the next thing now is for me to get to get um a a horizontal. If I want to get that look at it, please. This. R A horizontal. R A horizontal. This is the this is the hinge. This is the hinge here. I cut at the hinge. The, this distance, this, this is this distance is three, three meters, as you can see there. Then this is R A. R A is R A vertical is 75 kilometers. This is the lobes. That's small part of the lobe. That's half part of the lobe. I take moment, so I take moment at the at the hinge. I take moment at the hinge. That's at point C. I cut, I cut the the, the I cut the, the the arc at point C, and take the left side, which in, in which there is R A H, R A horizontal, and the left. I take that side. Look at it here. So I now take moment to that moment about C. About C is equal to zero. That is this. I have 75, that is ROA, ROA vertical, 75 times the distance. The distance is half of 25, 25, which is 12.5. And the horizontal distance minus R minus this and the height, which in this is, is three, three ROA horizontal minus three, that times R A horizontal. That is turning this way. This is turning against. This is turning against. So minus the load. The load is six times twelve point twelve point five twelve point five squared over two. Equal to zero. From here, I got R A. I got R A plus R A horizontal. I did I got ROA horizontal to be 156.25 ROA horizontal 156.25 kilometer. So I got ROA horizontal to be 156.25 kilometer. That's what I got ROA horizontal to be. So I now come to uh, I now come to I've got ROB vertical. So I now come to ROB horizontal. If I come down the horizontal, I cut again. I cut again at at the hinge, which gives me a, a, a zero moment. So the height from here to here is still three, three meters. Then from here to here is twelve point five meters, half of the 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 span, you know. So I have. Here, ROB is 75 kilometers. And I have here ROB, ROB horizontal, which is what I'm looking for. So I start. I have total moment about, about C. That's, that's a hinge. It's equal to zero. It's equal to zero. So I have um, the 75. That is, that's, the ROB horizontal that's 75 times 12.5 minus is that 3 minus 3 ROB horizontal minus the load minus the load because this is positive this is going up this is going against this is also about that is going against it's going against so Minus six times twelve point five squared over two. It's equal to zero. So I have RB RB horizontal to be one fifty six point two five. RB horizontal is equal to one 
156.25 kilonewtons. So I've gotten the whole reactions. I've gotten the whole reactions. The next thing is to calculate by the moment. I've gotten the whole reactions. The reaction A, both horizontal and vertical. Reaction B, both horizontal and vertical. Now the next thing is to calculate bending moment. To calculate bending moment, I decide any point I want. Let me take bending moment at the point. If I take bending moment at the point of the at the point of the of, of, of that at point C, I'll get zero. I can try it because that is the bending moment at the uh, that's the bending moment at the hinge. It will give me zero. If you didn't give me zero, then I've made a mistake. So you give me zero because that's the bending moment at the hinge. Okay, let me try it. Bending moment at the hinge. Bending moment at the hinge. Let me try bending moment at the hinge. Bending moment at the hinge. So I have bending moment at the hinge. That's the M at C. M at C. If I take M at C, if I if I consider this left side, we take moment at C. I have M at C is turning this way. I said to call it positive. So another one becomes negative. So M at C is equal to A root A, which is 75. A root A times the distance is 12.5. Then minus minus arrow D arrow arrow A horizontal. That's 156.25 times 3. That is the height, you know. Then the load minus because the load is doing the same thing as the, the, the moment minus 6 times 12.5 squared over 2. If you check this, if you check this, it will give 0. If it didn't give zero, a mistake has been made. So that is the moment at the point C. So here I've gotten the oh, if I have if I want moment at point, any point here at point 12 points, it is the half is 12.5. That's why we have 12.5 here. If I want it at point six, what I do is to get what is the corresponding height. What is the corresponding height? Which I get from here. This is three. The length 25, this 25 minus that distance 6 times 6, I get the corresponding height. If I get that corresponding height, I now take moment. I fix that corresponding height. This is the distance at 6. The corresponding height will be the one here at 3. That's the height. Then the correspond 6 here, I get a moment. Immediately I get the, the moment at any particular point on the on the on the arc if i want the moment at this point what i do is to know the horizontal distance at this point that corresponds to that point i take that horizontal distance bring it here this is three that's the, the rise this is l l the, the span the span squared uh, that l minus the corresponding horizontal distance here like this i get the corresponding point here that is how i get the react the uh, the bending moment at each po position of the of the arc, I get different values of bending moment. So if I need to draw the diagram, it will look like this. It will grow until zero here. It is zero at this point, and most of it may, may be in this way, in this way. So that is that. Now I have been able to solve this arc, gotten the uh, reactions, all the reactions in the arc, a three hinge arc, gotten the bending moment at the at the at the at the, at the, at the hinge, and go then any other bending moment you want on the body of the arc, and with it the arc will be ready for design. You can design this arc now. So that is the end of this episode. Thank you very much.